Welcome to my new video about a new topic in UiPath. Today I will talk about variables and arguments. What they are and how to use them. I will also talk about workflows. This topic is important for developers, who want to learn re-framework in UiPath, and don't know how to use arguments and workflows exactly in UiPath. Are you ready? Let's go! I will start explaining variables. Variables are containers, that can hold multiple data entries or values of the same data type. It means, we use them to store data, which we need in the process. Data plays the main role in each process, because each process needs data to create an output. The data can be number, text or something else. So for each data type we need a variable of a specific type to store this data. For example to store an integer number we need a variable of type integer. To store text we need a variable of type string. And so on we can use different data types to store the data, which we may have in the process. In UiPath we have the following data types as standard. The first one is string. We use it to store a text, for example ABC. The next one is integer, to store integer values, for example the number 1. The next one is boolean, to store boolean values. Here we only have two options, either true or false. The next one is data table, which we can use to store tables consisting of rows and columns, for example an Excel table. The next one is array of different types. For example we can use array of string to store different string variables. Here we can use each data type for the array. The last standard data type is object. This type can be used to store data of unknown type. For example I don't know if the data is string or integer. In this case I can use this type to store the data. Object can be used to store any type of data. These are the standard types in UiPath, which we can see as default, but we have many other types which can be used for the process to store the different data types. For example double, date time, dictionary, JSON etc. The main use of variables is to store, process and pass the data from one activity to another one. The variables are like the blood in a human body. The blood transports oxygen from the lungs to the cells of the body. The variables also pass the data from one activity to another, so that a process can be executed and produces an output. What I am trying to say, that variables are very important for each process and without variables there is no process. Let's now see how can we create variables in UiPath. In UiPath we can create a variable in three different ways. The first one is from the variables panel. Here is the variables panel. Just click on create variable and you can create the variable. We have here four different properties for a variable. The first one is the name. So here you can use the name you want for the variable. I recommend you to use specific naming convention for the whole process, for example camel case or pascal case. It's not a matter which one do you use, but it's better to use only one in the whole process. The next property is the data type. Here you can set the type for the variable, what you want to store in it, for example string. So here you can find the default types, but if you need something else, you have to browse for it. The following window appears, where you can enter the type name. For example I want date time, so I can search for date time. Or also double. Once you selected the type, click on OK to use it. The next property is scope. Scope means, where we can find and use the variable. In this case my variable is only visible in the first sequence. If I click on the second sequence, I will not see the variable. I also cannot use the variable in the second sequence. Let's try adding right line activity to check. As you see, we have an error, that the variable is not declared here. Let's move the activity to the first sequence. I need to add the function to string, because the variable is double and it should be a string, so that I can print it into the console. Now as you see, we don't have any errors. So we have to change the scope to find the variable or we can define the same variable again. The last property is default, where we can enter the default value for the variable. It means we set a default value for this variable, which could be later changed during the execution of the process. But this value will be the first value for the variable. Let's add a value and run the code to see the result. As you see we have the same number, which we defined in the default property. 
These are the four properties of a variable. And this was the first way to create a variable. Let's see the next way how to create a variable. The second way is to create the variable directly within the activity, which we added. I mean in the expression directly. For example this assign activity. Here I can create a variable using mouse right click and then create variable. Or using the shortcut control and K. Then you can write the variable name and it will be created. As you see we have the variable here. The default type is always string, but we can change it if we need that. The scope is always automatically selected, where the activity is placed. In this case it's the first sequence, but we can change it for example to main sequence. But assign activity is in the first sequence, therefore it's created in this sequence. And the default value is empty. The third way to create variables is using the property panel. Here we can also use the shortcut control and K to create a variable. As you see the variable is created. I used only assign activities and the variables are created with the type string. But if we use other activities, the variable type will be automatically used, depending on the activity. Let's see right range activity for example. Here we need to enter a data table variable. So if I create a variable, the type will be automatically data table. Because for this part of activity we need a data table variable. Let's try other activity, for example matches. Let's create a variable for the output. As you see the type is now I enumerable match. In this way we can create the variables we need in the process. These were the three ways to create a variable. You know now also, what are the four properties of a variable? Let's move on to the next point, workflows. What are workflows and how to use them? Let's learn more about it. If we keep writing more and longer code, things quickly become a bit confusing. It becomes harder to survey and more complicated to understand. Therefore, in any programming language, we can divide large amounts of source code into smaller, manageable, and above all reusable units. These have different names in different programming languages. Sometimes they are called modules, sometimes they are called subroutines, methods or something else. In UiPath we call them workflows. So each workflow contains a part of code, which we can use more than once and also in other workflows. When to write a part of code as workflow. There is no rule for that. You have to define, which part of code is suitable to write as workflow. But here are some tips for that. If you have some activities, which are always the same in the code and will be used more than once. Here it's better to implement these activities in a workflow, so that you can use this workflow in different parts of the process. For example taking a screenshot and saving it in a specific folder. This function could be implemented as a workflow, so that you can use it in each try-catch activity, so that a screenshot will be taken in case of an exception. Or for example killing the applications, which can be used at the end of the process, but also in case of an exception. The second tip is if your code is long and contains many sequences and activities. Here you can split this code into multiple code parts. Each part will be implemented in a workflow. You can then call the different workflows after each other. So always try to simplify the code using workflows. Workflows make your process also easier to handle in case of any exceptions. There are four layouts of workflows. Sequence, flowchart, state machine, and global handler. Which layout you have to use depends on your code. If you want for example to execute three activities after each other, you can use sequence. If you have some decisions in the code and you need to repeat some steps more than once, you can use flowchart. I talked about these layouts in other videos on my channel. Please check this video to learn more about these layouts. 
Please notice that you are able to have only one global handler workflow in the process, but you can create many other workflow layouts as you like. It means, you could have for example 10 sequence workflows, but you may have only one global handler. In one process you could also have all workflow layouts together. It means, you could have some sequences, some flowchart and some state machine workflows. But only one global handler or no one. Let's see how to create a workflow in UiPath. There is two ways to create workflows. The first one is clicking on new in the menu. Here you can select the workflow type, which you want to create. Or under tab project using mouse right click here under add, you can select the workflow type. Let's create a sequence workflow. The following window appears. Here you have to write a name for the workflow. I will call it for example kill application. I recommend you to use a name without any spaces or special characters. Only letters and underscore. So I will click on create to create the workflow. Here you can find the new workflow. The workflow will be opened automatically. Now you can write your code here. I will add for example kill process activity. Let's add the process name here, for example Excel. Now we have a workflow in the project. But how to call this workflow in other workflows? Let's switch to the main workflow for example to call this new workflow there. Search for activity invoke workflow file. This activity is to call a workflow. Here you need to enter the workflow name. Either you write the name manually or you can select it using this button. Select the workflow you want to call and click on open. As you see I have Excel open now. Let's run the code to see the result. As you see, I am executing main workflow. Excel application is closed. We can also call the workflow using drag and drop. Just navigate to project tab. I will first delete this activity. And I pull the workflow into the main workflow. As you see, the activity invoke workflow file is automatically added and the name is also selected. This is what workflows and how to use them. Let's now move to the last point in this video, arguments. But before I start talking about arguments in UiPath, let's see the following example to understand variables, workflows and arguments. And what is the difference between variables and arguments? I have here the Europe map. We have different countries, for example Germany, Sweden, Spain etc. Assume each country is a workflow, and Europe is the main workflow. In each country there are different cities. So the cities are the activities inside the workflow. We also have people how want to travel from a city to another, but inside the same country. Let's take Germany for example. So Germany is a workflow. We have here the different cities as mentioned, which are the activities. To travel from a city to another, we need public transport for example buses. The buses are the variables, and the people are the data, which is passed using the variables. Buses are responsible for transporting the people from a city to another city inside the same country. It means, the variables are responsible for passing the data from an activity to another activity in the same workflow. Some buses could transport people in the whole country, but some buses are only responsible for a specific part of the country. It means, that each bus drives in only one specific zone. The zone could be the whole country, but it could also be only between some cities. So the zone is the scope of the variable. That's all about the variables. Assume we want to travel to another country, for example from Germany to Spain. The buses can only transport the people inside one country. But for traveling between the countries we need another transport, for example airplane. So airplanes are responsible for transporting the people from one country to another. Airplanes are the arguments, which pass the data from a workflow to another workflow. In summary, variables are only for passing the data within the same workflow, 
and arguments are for passing the data between workflows. For arguments we have directions, but variables don't have directions. But what does a direction mean and how to know which direction should I use? We have three directions. In, which stands for input. Out, which stands for output. In out, which stands for input and output at the same time. Let's talk about these three directions in different examples. The first one, in. Assume the main workflow is Europe, and Spain is a workflow. People want to travel from a country in Europe to Spain. It means, we should invoke Spain workflow in the main workflow. As mentioned, for passing data between workflows we need arguments, airplanes between two countries. The plane arrives in Spain, therefore the direction here is in. So it's not a matter, where the plane flies from. More important is, where the plane arrives in. This means that we define an argument in Spain workflow, which has the in direction. Let's see the next direction, out. Assume Germany is a workflow and Spain is a workflow. People want to travel from Germany to Spain. As mentioned Europe is the main workflow. We want to invoke the both workflows, Germany and Spain, in the main workflow. So the plane flies out from Germany and arrives in Spain. For Germany the direction is out, because here the plane has flown from this country. And for Spain the direction is in, because the plane arrives into this country. Let's see the third direction, in out. We have again the main workflow Europe. And we have three workflows, Germany, Spain, and Sweden. We have a plane, which flies from Germany to Spain. And again from Spain to Sweden. For Germany we have the direction out, because the plane flies out from Germany. For Sweden we have the direction in, because the plane arrives in Sweden, which flew from Spain. Spain is the most important country in this example. As mentioned the plane arrives in Spain, so we have the direction in. The same plane should again fly to Sweden, so we have here the direction out. But because we here have the same plane, I mean the same argument, we set the direction in out. That's all about variables, workflows and arguments. Let's try to implement these examples about arguments in UI path, so that you can understand it better, how can we use them? I will start with the first argument direction, in. As already mentioned, we want to travel from a country in Europe to Spain. I am now in main workflow. I called it Europe. I will create a variable in the main workflow. Let's call it plane. I will use the type array of string. I will also set a default value for this variable. For example these names, who are in the plane. So we have here a variable plane of type array string, which has the following names. As mentioned we want to travel to Spain, therefore I will invoke the Spain workflow. Let's first create an argument in Spain workflow. I will call it an underscore plane. Here is a tip for you how to set the name for the arguments. Always set the direction, then underscore, and then the name. For example for input direction set in. For output direction set, out. And for input output set, io. In this way you can differentiate between arguments and variables, and also you know directly the direction of the argument. So this is a tip, not a rule. You can follow it if you want. As mentioned we need here the direction in, because we want to get data from other workflows into this workflow. It's also of type array string. We don't need a default value. Now we can write the code in this workflow, which should be executed, once this workflow is invoked. I will only print the names from the input argument into the console. I mean we will get an array as input argument, which contains some names. In this loop I want to print the names from this array. I will change the type argument into string, because we have strings in the array. And now I will print out the names from this array. I will write Spain at the beginning, so that you know that this code here is executed.
So in this workflow we will print all names from the array, which comes as input argument to this workflow. Now in the main workflow we can see, that we have an argument for Spain workflow. You can see the name, direction and type. Here in the value we have to define, what we want to give to this workflow. You can write the value directly, if you have a value, or you can use a variable. I have a variable plane. Let's use it here. So this variable has this value here. It means, we give these names as input for the Spain workflow. Let's run the code to see what happens. As you see, we have here the three names from the array argument. This is how to use an argument with direction, in. Let's see the next direction, out. In this example we want to travel from Germany to Spain. We want to invoke the both workflows in the main workflow. So the people comes out from Germany, therefore I will create an argument with direction out, so that we can pass data from Germany workflow out to another workflows. And the argument type is also array string. I will set a value for this argument. For example I will add the following name into this array. This name should be passed out of this workflow. Now in main workflow I will invoke the Germany workflow. I will create a variable for the output from this workflow. It means, the value from Germany workflow will be saved into this variable, which I defined in the main workflow. As you see, the variable is created, and it's of type array string. Now after we got the value from Germany workflow, I want to join the both arrays, plain and temp array. The joined array should be as input for the Spain workflow later. I will join the both arrays into one array, plain. This can be done using this statement. Let's see the arguments of Spain workflow. Here we have an input argument. The value is from the variable plane, which now contains the values from the both variables, plane and temp array. Let's see what happens now. First the Germany workflow will be invoked. From this workflow we get an array, which will be stored to temp array variable. In the next activity the both arrays will be joined, plane and temp array. At the end we pass this variable to Spain workflow, which now contains the values from two arrays. I will run the code now to see the result. As you see, we have first the three values, which were stored in the first array variable, plain. And the last one is the new name, which we got from Germany workflow. This is how to use argument with direction, out. Let's now move to the last example, argument of type in out. In this example we want to travel from Germany to Spain, and then from Spain to Sweden. We have first the Germany workflow, where I define an output argument with only one name. In main workflow I have this assign activity, to merge the both arrays, plain and temp array. Temp array is the variable, which we got using the argument from Germany workflow. The plain variable is what I defined in the main workflow with this default value. It means, that after executing this assign activity, we will have four names in the plain variable. The three names from default value here, and the name from the Germany workflow. I will talk about Spain workflow later. Let's first edit the Sweden workflow. As mentioned we want to travel to Sweden, which means that we want to pass data into this workflow, therefore I will create an input argument for this workflow. I will call it an underscore plane. 
The direction is in. The type is again array string. I will copy the loop from Spain workflow and add it into Sweden workflow. I will only edit the text here to Sweden. So in this workflow I will only print out the names, which are stored in the input argument. Now let's move to Spain workflow. Here we have the loop, which prints the names into the console. I will add a new activity to change the content of the input argument, after printing the names into the console. I will set the following names in the argument. It means I change here the content of the argument in this step, after I printed out the names, which came as input argument. I want to give the new value of the argument as output to another workflow. Therefore I will change the direction of the argument to an out. This means, that I get data as input into this workflow using this argument, but I want also to give data out of this workflow, after I change the value of this argument. In the example it means, we got first some names from Germany. Some names will stay in Spain, but some names want to travel again to Sweden, and it happens using the same plane. This workflow is also done. Let's now invoke the Sweden workflow after Spain workflow. And now I will add variables for the arguments. For Spain we need the plane variable, where we have the names from Germany and for main workflow. And for Sweden we need the same variable, which is changed in Spain workflow and contains a new value. Let's explain what happens in the main workflow. We are first in main workflow. In this workflow we have this variable, which has the following names. First the Germany workflow is executed. We get an array variable from this workflow, which contains only one name. This is the name. Then we merge this variable with the plain variable, which contains three names. The both arrays are stored into plain variable, which means that we now have four names in this variable. After that the Spain workflow is executed. This workflow gets four names from main workflow, the names are printed out here, then the content of the argument is changed. The new value contains three names, which are now stored in the plain variable on the main workflow. It means that these three names are written over. This variable is the input for the next workflow, Sweden. It means, Sweden get three names using the plain variable. In Sweden the names are printed out. And the execution is finished. Let's run the code to see the result. As you see we have these four names in Spain workflow. The first three are from main workflow, and the last one is from Germany workflow. Then we have three names in Sweden, which we got from Spain workflow, and printed out in Sweden workflow. That's all about how to use arguments with different directions. Now at the end of this video, I will talk about the differences between variables and arguments. Variables are to pass data between the different activities inside one workflow. Argument are also to pass data, but between the different workflows. For each variable we have a scope, where the variable is visible and can be used. Arguments don't have scope. They are visible in the whole workflow. There are no directions for variables, because we use them in one workflow. But arguments have directions to define, if the data should come in or come out. We have these three directions, in, out, in, out. We can create a variable in three different ways, in variables panel, in expression editor, or in the property panel of the activity. Arguments can also create it like variables. The only difference is that we define them in arguments panel, not in the variables panel. And the last point is that each variable has the following properties. Name, type, scope, default. And arguments have the following properties. Name, direction, type, and default. And workflows are to split a code into multiple code parts, to make it simple and to reuse the different parts if it's needed. That's all about variables, arguments and workflows. I created this video to explain these in details, because we need them in each project. And specially in ReFramework we use arguments too much, therefore it's good to learn arguments, so that you can understand ReFramework better. 
If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to write us. Have a good day.